This is Tom Fox. For the next series of episodes, Ronnie Feldman and I do things a little bit differently. I pose a question to Ronnie, and he gives us a hot take, and we explore from there. These episodes are a little bit shorter, but they're a lot of fun. I know you'll enjoy them. Before we get started, we're going to have a quick word from our sponsor, and we'll be back with Creativity in Compliance. Hey, we're back for another episode of Creativity and Compliance with Tom Fox and Ronnie Feldman. This is Ronnie Feldman, and I'm introdu- introducing the topic today uh, where we're doing a series of putting out uh, a sort of uh, provocative statement and then uh, exploring it. Um, Tom, you had a, a one here. Let's explore lawyers, guns, and money. What do you mean by that? So, yeah, Ronnie, uh, at the tip of the hat, to Warren Zevon, one of my favorite artists of all time, uh, lawyers, guns, and money. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk about this, Ronnie, is I wanted to describe the situation and then ask you maybe how you might think about uh, doing some training around it because it's a pretty serious situation. We recently had the first opinion release from the Department of Justice in uh, 2022, appropriately named Opinion Release 2201. And that opinion release described a situation where a shipping company's um, ship was seized in uh, territorial waters of a country, and they imprisoned the ship's captain. The ship's captain had a medical condition which required um, ongoing medicine and medical treatment, unknown what the medical condition was. The country that imprisoned him... um, did not or would not tell the um, shipping company the charges against the captain, nor bring him in front of a judge to try to resolve it in that manner. Uh, so the company paid $150,000 to get their captain out. Uh, and so the question was presented to the Department of Justice, is that an FCPA violation? And the department said, No, this is not an FCPA violation. And the reason it's not an FCPA violation is that that was an extortion payment. An extortion payment is different than a bribe. An extortion Mm -hmm. payment occurs when either your liberty is at risk, your life is at risk, your liberty being put in jail unfairly, your life, somebody puts a gun in your face, or your health, where you are told... To come into this country, you have to have a shot for a certain um, medical condition and uh, step right over here, drop your drawers, and we'll just pop you right here uh, where you have no idea what they're putting into your body. So um, these are literally exempt from the FCPA. And the reason I wanted to bring it up, Ronnie, is you have to train employees on this. You have to train them that, number one, if it's a true extortion payment, uh, there's no FCPA implication. But more importantly, if somebody puts a gun in your face or somebody threatens you with jail, do whatever you can to get out of that situation, whether it's at a border crossing, whether it's you know in the country, whatever it may be. And properly document the situation, write up what happened. And so when you get back to the home office, uh, you can uh, write up a report about about it, and the company can properly reimburse you for the cash, and it's always cash you've had to pay to get out. So it's a long-winded way, Ronnie, of saying uh, extortion payments are not covered by the FCPA. We as compliance professionals need to train on it. And so the, the, the reason I bring it up as an issue is how would you uh, suggest a compliance professional train on extortion payments in a way that is respectful of the situations, yet uh, entertaining that people would remember it. Gosh, what a fascinating story. I I have a couple reactions. Um, My first thought is that this probably shouldn't be your first training if it's your, if, if you're trying to educate the, 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 the employees at risk about this, the first message is probably about, um, the important, you know, importance of not bribing or the appearance of bribing and, and the appearance of not uh, doing improper payments um, because 
st- these are things that have been happening in many countries for for a long time, and, and so we're sort of trying to roll that behavior back, right, to get rid of all that anti-corruption behavior. I feel like that's story num- number one. Um, then this is a more nuanced thing, thing about it, where, again, I, to me, it's most helpful to not talk about the law and to tell a story about what happened, and with the main lesson being, if you're your life is in danger, um, you need to take care of yourself, right? Um, but your main point about this is how do you make that interesting? Oh my gosh, it's already so interesting. So you have this real story that happened. The more that we take stories from real life that feels relevant to people, gosh, that's what a great way to educate people with it without, it doesn't even have to feel like a training. The ways you can de- deliver that are, are numerous. Uh, it's, it certainly could I think the first instinct is most companies will probably put out a case study. I would say that's, you know, the bar is low for that, but it's nice to lay it out clearly. I would say you can write so, but you could write that as a story. How would you tell that story? You would, you, 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 you wouldn't necessarily say, you know, put a series of bullet points. You'd be like, there's this company and they have this really important shipment and this person was well educated. And then they went, Oh my God, there was a seizure of the, uh, uh, and they were in prison. Oh my goodness. Like th- these are interesting stories that can be presented in a written format. It could be a podcast, right? You can reenact that. It could be, uh, uh certainly a video of someone telling that story. Um, there's a, a million, uh, uh, there's, there's a infinite number of ways to, to, share that but the key is to not take the interesting parts out of interesting way to teach um is to to bring that up um so yeah that's my my reaction what do you think uh so i think uh those are all great points uh what i hadn't fully appreciated was kind of what you started with which is uh, tom the story's already here we just have to get it out Uh, i don't have to make anything up uh this is literally a real event that happened to someone in a company, and that may be stronger than what people perceived is, is a made-up story or fiction. And so you've given me the story. You've given me the hard work. Now all I have to do is tell it. So I uh, really kind of not thought through the power of that that part of it, but um, it's a message that, that needs to get out. And, and if you can put some entertainment around that in whatever format you, you suggest, as you said, it could be a podcast. It could be written format. It could be some sort of a shorter uh, audio communication. It could even be a some sort of uh, video. Then um, that uh, really you really are onto something there, Ronnie. Yeah, like think about the there's. I always remember uh, VH1 behind the music back in the day, which was always like an artist uh, telling the story, and it was how they came up, and then they eventually got involved in drugs, and then they came crashing down. It was usually them telling their story, and then it was reenacted. I feel like all those murder shows that they always have, it's the same thing. They're telling real stories. The the podcast serial, where they basically research and, and bring to life uh, stories of, of murder and fraud and corruption. And that's what, that's what compliance is often about. The most interesting cases are real and we have them, uh, right. You can certainly pull them out of, out of those, um, opinions, uh, pieces. And it's about fraud, corruption, harassment, discrimination. These are meaty subjects. I always just say like, let's tell those stories as stories, let's not wipe the interesting parts out about it and sanitize it into bullet points. I do think it's helpful to to put, you know, a facilitator's guide or, or some thoughts around, you know, what lessons you want people to pull out of that so that they don't come away from your story and think, oh, OK, I got to get a, a joke free card. You know, I'll I'll uh, I can get away with it under these circumstances. You want to come away with you no know, like we care about you if you need to protect yourself in these situations, but outside of that, be careful. <laughs> and Warren Zevon, by the way, fantastic. Love, love, uh, werewolves of London, uh, and lawyers, guns and money. Those are the two great ones. So Ronnie, unfortunately we're near the end of our time for this episode, but I want to tell our audience, uh, adios slash Azvita <laughs> Zane. Uh, yes. Adios Azvita Zane. Hey, I liked it when you, uh, you bring one to me. Let's do that more often. I, I'm running out of things to talk about. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta start bringing uh, stuff to the table there, Tom. All right, Ronnie. Thanks.
<laughs> Thanks for joining us for this episode of Creativity and Compliance. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.